Welcome back. I'm starting with our first segment talking about electric cars here in Egypt. Well, uh, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi gave directives to localize um, eco-friendly industries, which also involve modern technology. And Minister of Public um, Enterprise Sector also announced that Egypt will manufacture the electric car here in Egypt. Talking about the electric car and how far it is important here in Egypt, we have the pleasure to have with us Mr. Ahmed Chita and his automotive media expert writer and specialist. Good morning, Dr. Good morning to you, Mohammed Chita, not Ahmed Chita. <laughs> Sorry. A very, a very beautiful good morning to you and also, of course, to the distinguished uh, viewers of Nile TV. Uh, and it's a pleasure to be back uh, on air with you. Thank you. So, Mr. Mohammed, first of all, talking about the electric car in Egypt, how do you see this and how important it is when it comes to the automotive industry? Well, actually, it's, it's, um, it's actually uh, a very important step. And um, we just witnessed this week the uh, European uh, Union, um, the EU has uh, decided to ban gasoline and, and diesel cars starting from 2035. So we are definitely on the right track. Of course, this will take um, uh, still some time till the EU member states and also the EU parliament approves this date. But um, as a matter of fact, they have already started uh, um, significant steps to, towards the uh, environmental friendly uh, technologies such as electric vehicles, hybrid vehicles, as well as hydrogen vehicles. So uh, in order to start, um, we already had a law in 2018, in new regulations, which allowed the import of used electric uh, vehicles and uh, used hybrid vehicles as well. So this is because hybrid vehicles are the, uh, uh, the intermediate step between gasoline cars and electric cars. So hybrid vehicles um, have a combination of a traditional uh, internal combustion engine, which is the normal gasoline or diesel engine we know. And in addition to that, it has a small electric engine as well and a small battery. So it's not a, um, a big battery like in the electric vehicles, but it's a small battery so you can use it like for 60, 70 kilometers, which when you are driving the car inside, uh, uh, inside, for example, cities or downtown. And then when you drive on the highway, then you can use your normal uh, gasoline engine because, of course, you need uh, the, the aim, bet um, after, um, uh, the aim of, of hybrid vehicles is to reduce the emissions inside the cities. So inside the cities you use the electric uh, engine of the hybrid car and then when you drive outside the city you use the normal gasoline engine. So the government already approved that law in 2018 and they, they started allowing the import of hybrid cars, uh, used hybrid cars and used electric vehicles as well. And I think this was one of the most important steps in the past 30 or 40 years in the automotive sector because we need, in order to attract investors from, the, uh, from Europe or the United States uh, of America or from uh, Japan or Korea, and also not only um, attract the automotive companies, but also the suppliers and, and the feeding industries like um, uh, the producers of the, of the parts uh, which we use in, 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 the, in the car factories or, or, or even the, the, the spare part uh, producers. We need to have a huge market uh, in order to attract them. So uh, allowing the import of used electric vehicles as well as hybrid vehicles is a very important step um, it, in reaching this, uh, this goal. And I think Nile TV is predestinated for uh, being a unique platform, a unique English and French speaking platform in order to deliver the message uh, to the uh, potential uh, investors from the automotive and uh, and the feeding industry to come to Egypt and invest in Egypt because it's uh, it's it has a huge potential this market. I remember we talked a lot about the automotive industry and we have talked about how huge industry it is, especially when it comes to uh, boosting economy and uh, providing more job opportunities and opening uh, the way for the feeding industry Definitely. as well. Definitely. Um, uh, this is uh, absolutely correct uh, what you have just mentioned. For example, in Germany, 
uh, um, the main uh, uh, the main industry in, in Germany, which is boosting and 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 which had which has made uh, Germany the number one economy in the EU, is the automotive industry and the supplying industry of the automotive sector. So we have a huge potential in attracting those companies uh, uh, to Egypt. Um, during the past uh, 20 years, we had a few assembly lines. I, I wouldn't even call them factories because. It was just a line, um, it was just a big hangar where you had different lines, for example, even sometimes uh, two or three brands in one hangar. So we used, and we didn't concentrate on, on exporting the cars. So, so I think with the new project we have, with the new uh, Nasr uh, company, uh, which uh, Minister Hisham Taufi definitely um, has pushed a lot during the past couple of years with the directives, of course, um, of President Abdel Fattah Sisi, I think we have the potential of exporting this car, but we need to, to, take, uh, 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 to take good care of some of them uh, and to avoid the mistakes which have been done in the past. And some of those mistakes were, for example, not having enough active and passive safety features in the car. If you want to import a car to significant key markets, for example, in the Middle East region or uh, in, in Europe, you need to have at least um, the ESP, the Electronic Stability Program, uh, the TPMS, the tire pressure monitoring system, and at least six airbags in order to be competitive. So if the new E70 uh, car from uh, Nasr company will have uh, the electronic program and the TPMS, PMS, the tire pressure monitoring system and six airbags, I think it has a huge potential to be exported um, not only to Africa because actually I don't think Africa should be our aim because Africa is not a huge market and the profit margins you do in Africa are not as big as the profit margins you can do in, uh, in uh, uh, Europe for example. The German, the German automotive market alone um, uh, has 50 million cars running on the German streets. So just to put it in, in, in comparison to, for example, in Egypt, we only have around 5 million uh, uh, passenger cars uh, driving on Egyptian roads. So you can see there's a huge potential. They have 100 million Germans living there. We have also approximately 100 million Egyptians living there. enough, we don't... Sorry? <laughs> enough, I mean, we don't need more cars to be... Uh, no, actually, actually, I think we have more potential because actually we have so many new cities. Yes. The, uh, the, the, the of course, the manufacturing, uh, let's say, the infrastructure that we have seen recently exactly. paved the way actually for a e lot. Exactly. Are. You just, as you just mentioned, correct, uh, uh, President Abdel Fattah Sisi uh, paid lots of attention to the infra. To and the, we feel it every day coming exactly. to work, for example, moving uh, across uh, many of the new uh, roads and the bridges definitely Absolutely. facilitated. The you, you know, the congestions we have in Cairo are because of mismanagement of the, yes. uh, of the, the traffic. Uh, of the traffic. In the past, but yes. actually, if we have a good management of the traffic, for example, people who park second row and third row in main streets, then, then you will have no congestions in, in, in Cairo. So I think, I think the problem is with the traffic department, not with the capacity of the roads. I think, we, and of course now with the improved uh, infrastructure, we have a huge potential for increasing to at least 15 or 20 million cars. And we need to increase to 15 or 20 million passenger, passenger cars if we want to attract foreign direct investments from, uh, from Europe, for example. Because actually, uh, I think, the European cars are the best cars in the world right now, much better than even the Koreans or the Chinese or the Japanese or even the American cars. And we are very close to Europe. We have a free trade agreement with Europe, so we can already import cars with the, with the zero customs. So this means we also can import the spare parts and all the parts we would need uh, from the suppliers also with zero customs. So we have a huge potential actually with Europe and I think we definitely need to, uh, to open more for the import of used cars. For example, this uh, law which was introduced in 2018 allowed the import of uh, three years old cars. I think we should increase this three-year-old three uh, uh, rule to uh, at least 10 years old cars because the cars in Europe which were manufactured and assembled after 2011, they all have the electronic stability program and the tire pressure monitoring system as an obligatory standard equipment in every car sold in Europe. So this means any used car you import from Europe until model year 2011 already has this life-saving 
electronic stability program and the tire pressure monitoring system. So this would not only make it more affordable for Egyptians to uh, buy cars, it would, it would enlarge the automotive market, the fleet market we have in Egypt. So this would attract uh, foreign investors to come and invest in Egypt uh, in, in, in car uh, factories and as well as uh, uh, feeding uh, factories. And the most important thing, it would reduce the number of road fatalities and road crashes on Egyptian roads. So it would save hundreds, if not thousands of innocent lives because when these cars come, and they, are, uh, they have uh, all these uh, um, um, life-saving active, uh, uh, active and passive safety features, then it would also be good for the road safety situation in Egypt as well. Um, Sir Muhammad, talk me about <coughs> the electric car and what kind of preparations are we taking right now to um, start such uh, an important step? Um, actually, the government did lots of preparation, as you might have heard, and as maybe also our viewers um, um, have heard, um, the, uh, the Ministry of, uh, of Trade and the Ministry um, of the, uh, uh, the Public Sector, they have already invested he, uh, he, uh, uh, hugely uh, with the Ministry um, of Electricity and also the, um, um, the, minister, uh, the Ministry of Oil and Gas. They have established uh, lots of um, uh, uh, charging stations at the different gas stations in Egypt. So currently they are preparing to have around 3,000 charging points um, uh, all across Egypt, which, which will make it uh, much easier for people to travel because we have to, uh, to always keep in mind electric cars were not uh, developed for long range traveling. They were uh, developed for uh, using them inside the congested cities where there is a huge, uh, a large uh, air pollution in order to reduce the emissions. So at the beginning, most of uh, the, bat the battery ranges of most of the electric cars were between 100 and maximum 300 kilometers uh, per, per charge, per uh, battery charge. Now, this has developed over the past couple of years. We have cars which reach uh, 400 kilometers, other cars which, re which reach 500. And currently, there are some cars being developed which will reach 1,000 kilometers per. Do they have, uh, um, uh, I mean, uh, support or uh, uh, an added uh, battery, for example? Uh, no, actually, the, the technology it of the batteries is developing. It, it's the same like with the, uh, with, the, with for example, the, the batteries of the mobile phones. You know. Uh, Just um, allow me to move into uh, a quick break, then we'll be back. Okay. Welcome back and still we are talking uh, about electric cars in Egypt with our guest uh, Mr. Mohammed Sheta and we were talking about all the preparations uh, that uh, Egypt has uh, taken for the electric cars and you were talking about the stations and uh, more incentives to be given to the Egyptian citizen and of course we are talking about the category the E70 right? Exactly absolutely right um, uh, the Egyptian government will start assembling uh, this E70 in cooperation with the uh, Chinese company Dongfeng here in Egypt. There will be three uh, different uh, trims and three different versions of this E70. Uh, one is, I think, uh, 300 kilometers, uh, the second one 400 kilometers range, and the third one with the 500 kilometers range. So, so this is, uh, those are the different versions which will be available. Of course, what is even more important is to have more incentives, not only uh, at the uh, for the retail price of the car, which is supposed to be, uh, I think it has an incentive of 50,000 uh, uh, Egyptian pounds um, um, a discount. But I think it's very important to also do like other countries did. For example, in Dubai or in Europe, you get free parking uh, whenever you, if you are driving a uh, electric vehicle, you get free parking everywhere. Um, in, your, in, in Dubai, for example, you get, you, you even can charge your car free of charge at the different mall, at the different public. What about the electric uh, stations now in Egypt? Uh -huh. Yeah, we have. What's going on? We, 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 the, the Egyptian government is developing uh, um, approximately 3,000 charging, uh, uh, charging stations with 6,000 charging points, like because every uh, charging station has like two charging points, so two cars can charge the batteries at the same time. I, I think those stations are supposed to be uh, up and running within the next couple of months. So this is, of course, a very important uh, uh, step. 
Uh, the next step should be to, uh, to give more incentives also for the chargers at home uh, because this is a very important uh, step. Um, lots of people, not everyone has a villa with, this, with a private garage where they can charge their car easily. But for example, if you're living in, in, a, in an apartment building, if you're living in the uh, 10th floor and you're parking your car on the street, you need charging points in the street, you know. So, so this is something which definitely the government needs to look at as well. And of course, then we have later on uh, what, what the government is also doing in parallel. Uh, uh, President Abdel Fattah Sisi recently had a meeting discussing the hydrogen uh, potential for Egypt. This is very important because hydrogen is also emission free uh, technology. Of course, it's very expensive technology, so it will not be suitable. There are, there are a couple of um, cars which run with the hydrogen, uh, which are uh, uh, sold in Europe and the United States, but they're still a little bit expensive. But the hydrogen technology will be very important for trucks and buses because um, they are uh, zero emissions as well. And they can travel uh, for long distances, distances and also uh, load lots of uh, uh, loads, for example. So, uh, so I think the government will, will go into these uh, two directions during the next couple of years. Whenever we talk about automotive, definitely the most important part is uh, after buying the after services. Sales. Yes, yes, the after sales service, services, yes. of course. So uh, tell me more about this part again and uh, talking about um, definitely uh, when you buy such a car, if you are talking about incentives or facilities provided, yes. because this is the most important uh, part, uh, just the after sale services. Absolutely. You're abs uh, this is correct. Uh, um, the Egyptian consumer uh, always pays lots of attention to two things when he buys a new car. The resale of the car, this is the most important thing, and the after sales and the availability of the spare parts and the affordability of the service and the spare parts as well. So I assume that the Egyptian government, since they will be taking care of the uh, E70 and the Nasser project, that they will definitely have lots of service uh, points uh, uh, spread all over uh, Egypt as well. I think um, they have, um, they ha the government said that uh, they have the capacity of producing up to 50,000 cars a year. This is a huge number because if you take into consideration that the, the Egyptian market uh, currently is about 100,000 cars a year, so this means a market share of 50%. This needs to be, uh, in order to reach, to sell 50,000, not only produce but also sell 50,000, you need to have a very competitive car. So you, have, you need to have very competitive prices as a retail price of the car. You have to, to have a very competitive prices in terms of uh, the service of the car, the, the maintenance of the car, and the spare parts, of course, as well. So I think they will take care of this issue. The other uh, car importers and dealerships in Egypt over the past 10 years, they have totally ignored the hybrid technologies and the electric vehicle technologies as well because they're only uh, concentrating on gasoline cars because they prefer to import uh, the uh, low technology or old technology gasoline cars from China for example because they're very cheap so in order to have a much uh, a much bigger profit margin because compared to the modern hybrid technology and to the modern uh, electric vehicles uh, um, of course, they were much more expensive. So I think the competition, the most important thing is the competition in the Egyptian market. I need to have m more competition. I have to open the markets much more. This will m uh, allow more importers and more investors to come into the market. Uh, um, consequently, the prices of the cars will go down. And of course, also the prices of the service um, and the maintenance and the spare parts will go down as well. So how we will reach that? I think it's very important, like I said, like to do like uh, the other Northern, uh, North African and the Middle Eastern uh, countries are doing, to open the import of the used cars as well up until 2011. Because I think this is the only way that we will grow our local automotive market to 10 or 15 or 20 million cars. And this is the only way to attract foreign investors to come and invest in Egypt. And then the more car factories for export, not only for the local market, because this is very important. If we get car companies to come invest in Egypt only for the local market, Egypt, the Egyptian economy will not benefit from it and the Egyptian consumer will not benefit from it as well. The only one who will benefit from it will be the car company. But we need to export the cars in order to get hard currency and in order to be able to compete and export on large scales like Morocco is doing, for example. Morocco 
I think they have uh, crossed uh, the production of one million cars and I think the majority of these one million cars are being exported. So just imagine instead of having a market which only sells 100,000 cars a year, we, can pr we, we could produce up to one million cars and export 500 or 600,000 uh, outside Egypt and still we would have enough cars for the a local market. A huge industry and let me say recently we have seen for example the Go Green initiative. Absolutely. And definitely this was a very strong one because you are changing the mindset of people you know uh, sometimes you are in Egypt sometimes when you are used to something it is not that easy to change. Definitely. But we have seen great success actually that many people started to think and uh, think of the budget and think of the expenses and they started to move with the Go Green initiative. So I can see now that we're talking about uh, both, uh, whether we're talking about the, uh, this initiative or talking about the electric car in Egypt, yes. definitely both will change the map on the road. I, I think the Go Green initiative is one of the best initiatives we have had in Egypt over the past decades and they go hand in hand with, with the, uh, with the the interest uh, and, and the efforts of the Egyptian government in, in developing the, uh, the automotive sector into turning it into an environmental friendly um, automotive sector, not only producing uh, with the, uh, zero emissions uh, the cars, but also that the cars themselves are zero emission cars. And I think um, this is the trend worldwide. If you look um, at the European Union, for example, lots of uh, countries announced, even India and other countries, they announced that starting 2030, 2035 or 2040, they will not produce any traditional internal combustion <laughs> engines anymore and that they will only allow uh, the, uh, the sale of uh, new uh, electric vehicles only. So we are definitely going uh, parallel to the international trend and I think we, we, this is also very important in order to attract, again, to attract foreign investors because if you, if you, for example, want to attract a big company to come to Egypt, first of all, the owner of the company or the CEO of the company, he will travel to Egypt and, and see um, would it be an interesting environment to, to live in because for example, if you have a huge air pollution, lots of investors say, no, I will not come with my family. I will stay in a country where, there is a, where the, the air quality is good. So, so concentrating on uh, such initiatives like the Go Green initiative and, 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 and trying to, for, not force, but to encourage the Egyptian uh, uh, consumer uh, to adapt to, to a new way of living and invest, for example, instead of using electricity, use, for example, uh, solar energy panels at the house. <laughs> Even if it's, it, it, if it's expensive, uh, it's an, the initial investment is a little bit expensive. But at the end of the day, all this will, will, will reduce the pollution in Egypt. And I think this is, uh, this is uh, what we really need to do in the, you know, in the next um, uh, the couple of years. Just allow me at the end to say that what is really very, very interesting is not only about the electric car, but let me say that about the idea or the fact that we are living right now, that Egypt is moving forward uh, with the, among the whole world. We can cope with all the modern technology taking place around. We are not lagged behind anymore. I, I think in all industries, we are just in parallel with the major powers. Let me put it like this. You are moving forward. We are moving forward. We, of course, they are. They have much more. Uh, of course, but at least you they have, have the, the, the initiatives. You are moving forward. You are you are receiving good reports about uh, the, uh, the economic growth. What is going on? I mean, you are moving on the right track. Absolutely, yes. we, are, we are definitely on the right track. And I think in order to to benefit from from. Uh, uh, the efforts which have been done, we, we need to, um, to execute it in the most efficient way. Like I said, uh, the, the investments which we are doing, um, for example, in the um, infrastructure for electric vehicles is amazing. Uh, nevertheless, we need to encourage more people to, to get acquainted to this technology. So the only way to get people acquainted to these technologies is to allow them to experience, experience this technology at a, at a low price. And how do I get the low price? By allowing, them to, by allowing them to import used electric vehicles. So this is very important. I think if we, um, let me just give you an example. The, the E70 will but be very sold. Briefly, very briefly. Very briefly, yeah. The E70 will be sold uh, uh, starting 2080, uh, 280, 
280,000 Egyptian pounds till 350 or 380, something like that. I think it is very important also for the people who would like to have a car which is much cheaper than that because not everyone can afford a car for 300,000 uh, 300 Egyptian, uh, 300, Egyptian pounds. I think we need to open the import for used cars. If we, import the imp uh, if we uh, open the import of used electric vehicles so people can buy a used electric vehicle for 100,000 Egyptian pounds or 120 Egyptian pounds, I think this will make facilitate thousands yes. of Egyptians go for an electric vehicle and this would even uh, accelerate uh, the use of this uh, environmental friendly cars in Egypt uh, right. by, 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 by uh, in a very very short, short uh, period, of uh, period of time. Right Mr. Mohammed uh, Cheta, uh, automotive uh, media expert, uh, writer and specialist, thank you very much. Thank you very much for having us. me, have a nice day. Right, still we have more to bring you on the breakfast show but first moving on to a quick break then we'll be back.